and uh, maybe just take one or two trades, if you know what I mean. Hopefully that answers. Okay, no worries, Maxwell. Uh, Fit says, I've found it psychologically easier to hold by reducing. Absolutely. And that's another thing as well. 100%. I'm with you, Fitz. Yeah. So that's the reason why I enter two positions as well. And you guys know this. You can look at, you know, proof. I won't go through it again. Um, uh, but if anyone wants to know, I shall I'll go over it for those who are new. Um, what I do is I enter two positions. So in any, in any trade setup, yeah, let's say, for example, let's go back to the, 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 the pound dollar. Pound dollar, 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 right. Now, let's say, for example, this is turns into a trade setup that I want to be involved in, right? And let's say we see our, let me just get rid of, sorry. I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff. So let's say that the market now decides to go, it looks like it wants to go higher as well. So let's say we see a, a, a nice entry price, something like this, like that, and we see a really nice entry. Yeah. And say, let's say, for example, my entry is right there. That's a candlestick that I've got involved in, and that's it. Yeah. What I also do is I enter two positions. So one will be at the candlestick close, but also I'm looking at a 50% retracement from the high to my entry. So I'm looking for a pending order short, yeah, pending order short in case price comes up here, retraces before going down, because price can do what it wants. It, can, it doesn't always have to go you know, straight down here. So I always enter two positions. And then what I'm going to do is um, if I get triggered on the second position, this one is going for a two to one, absolutely. Two to one. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's no partial take a profit, nothing. Two to one, that's it. Brilliant. Because I have a better risk reward and it's more likely that I should hit a two to one on this position, potentially, um, because it, it requires less price movement for me to hit that two to one. So now if it hits a two to one here, then what I will do is this trade then becomes my swing trade because it's easier for me now to hold this trade knowing that I'm already up no matter what. If this trade now, if we win on this one, but we lose on this one, it comes and stops us out, I'm already up you know, if this was 1%, for example, and I made, I, I, you know, for maths, just for maths sake, um, you know, I made two to one, I risked 1%, made two to one, so it's 2%, yeah. And then uh, this position is also obviously 1%, and I lose that 1%, I'm still up 1%. Everyone follow me? Yeah. So once this hits two to one, not only can I not lose because most traders tend to move their stop to break even, but I'm I'm winning. It doesn't matter now. So now, like Fitz was saying, it's easy. It's easier now for me to just hold this trade and swing trade it. Swing, 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 swing trade. Now, if I don't get the pullback to this, if I don't get the pullback to the fifty percent level. Then what I will do is. This trade runs for, again, a two to one, yeah? But at the two to one, what I will do is I will take off around 80% of that trade so that, again, I'm up. Some traders have been telling me that they take off 50%, which is also a decent amount, which is good because, again, just from maths um, perspective, let's say, for example, again, this is 1% and, you know, you get to, or this is, you bet 10 pound, now you're up, you know, for a two to one perspective, you're up 20 pounds. If you take off 50% of the 20 pound unrealized profit, yeah, you'll be back to 10, yeah, because you take on, but what also happens is that your risk reduces to what? Five, because you've taken off half of your, you know, your lot size, your position size, yeah, or your, you know, if, you, if you're spread betting like me, you know, your, your, your pound per point, right? Or two pound or three pound per point, right? So, with that, you've reduced your risk 
and you bank some profits. So now, even if prices come back and stop you out, you've lost five, but you made 10. So you're still up five. You're still plus five. And it's really a nice position to be in. And that's what obviously with um, doing 50%, if you know what I mean. And it's a really nice position to be in when you know that you can't lose on the trade and not only that you can't lose that you're already up on that trade and you've already banked that and that psychologically helped me that method helped me to hold trades for longer and it's and i think somebody else i think it was was it was it mark or was it sam somebody was saying that they couldn't they didn't know how to take profit or their broker doesn't allow them to take profit who's who was that that's fucking terrible isn't it yeah i know <laughs> it doesn't add, but, but, but profits but but exactly but 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 the reason why the broker does that i think the, the reason why a broker would do that is because they understand that people are more likely to take profits sooner than let it run because if you can't take partial profits then it's like how do you know because none of us know where prices are going to go to right prices can go to you know all the way down and 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 you know make you a, a nice a nice sum but when you when you when you have to make that decision and one decision to say where am i going to get out most traders uh, you know the high majority of traders are not going to hold for that long because again as i alluded to before you're going to look at your what your unrealized profit and then you're going to take rather rather than go for maybe a 2 to 1 you're going to snatch profits at maybe a one and a half to one, maybe a one to one, etc. Because as well, price movement and what do we tend to do with, with certain price movement as well? And when prices, an easy trade is when you see prices come up to a level and get a nice little outside engulfing candle and then prices all go all the way down to your profit target. That's like, oh, brilliant. The, the painless trade. What happens sometimes and a lot of times is traders will get in a, get in a trade and then price will faff about. Faff about. Uh, 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 stop. No. Uh, 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 all right, cool. It hasn't stopped my stop yet. And then it goes near to your stop. And you go through so much pain, right? Because you're watching. First of all, you shouldn't necessarily be watching every single tick, but you go through so much agony in that trade. No trade should be, should be agony anyway. You should accept the loss before you even get into the trade. Yeah, you're only, you're only agonizing over the trade simply because you probably risk too much, if you know what I mean. Um, because you wouldn't agonize over a trade if it was an insignificant amount. If it was like, if it was like 10 pence on a trade, you wouldn't care. If it's, you know, an amount that you think, bloody hell, maybe I don't want to lose this, then that's why the, I guess where, that's where the emotion comes in. But getting back to the point is, is that price can, can, can mess about, right? And in that and you're feeling the pain and the pleasure and you're seeing unrealized profit go you know in the negative and then the positive and then maybe the negative and the positive again what are you probably more likely to do if prices go back into the positive take profits early i'll take profit there and the brokers know this about human psychology they know that so if they're only offering you um <laughs> they, they're not offering you a take a take profit uh, or or the ability to even scale out by um, by uh, allowing you to place, uh, you know, a, the opposite order in the other way. If you know, what I mean, if you, if you go and sell, then you should be able to do a buy order, etc., on the same uh, uh, pair to try and get out of it at a lesser amount. So let's say, for example, you, in for a long trade perspective, you did one lot, yeah, long. What if you want to scale out of a trade? A technique um, is 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 or you know, you'd, you'd place an order, a pending order, for maybe 0 0.5. You know, a sell order. Yeah? At where you want to scale out of. So if prices come up to here, then it sells, reducing your lot size to 0 0.5, if you know what I mean. So if they're not even allowing you to do that, oof, then, then, then they are, uh, <laughs> they're definitely taking advantage of... Uh, of uh, the trading psychology and uh, the fact that you can't get outside. So there are plenty of other brokers, mate, that, that, will, that will definitely um, allow you to scale out 100%. No worries, Mark, no worries. Uh, was there anything else? 
So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.